Sixer Nation, let's get ready to bring out the brooms. <laughs> This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talking sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike, yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast, and today we got a lot to talk about Sixer Nation, 3-0, and like this picture says, get ready to bring out the brooms. Now, before we get into today's topic, help your boy out and hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and ding that notification bell so you know when we drop videos or go live. Shout out to everybody who came to the live play-by-play. -play. It was wild. It was a crazy game, but deep in our hearts, although we played like trash in the first half, I don't think we ever thought we were actually going to lose, even when we were down 17. Even when we were down 17. I want to break this game down, and again, Doc Rivers. Yes, I'm back to calling him Doc Rivers until he makes me go back to Glenn. He drew up that play. There is a mic video out there. That I shared on Twitter, follow your boy at Philly underscore Mike 25 of him drawing up the play and the confidence in his voice when he said, I want you to move over here. Niang, I want you to do this. Tobias, we going to need you to set that screen. And Embiid, do you. Embiid, do you. And it's exactly what happened. Shout out to Nick Nurse for bringing Fred Van Vliet back. They thought, okay, 5-1-4. Don't guard the inbounder. That made a clean pass to Embiid. And like no other 7'2", 280-pound guy, he knocks down the game-winning three-pointer. Man, this was a crazy game. And again, Doc Rivers. Tobias Harris, although he only had 11 points, he had 12 rebounds, and he locked up. They won't let him out. Pascal Siakam. We knew if we were going to go to Toronto, and beat the Raptors, the baby dinosaurs, we would have to slow down Pascal Siakam. OG Ananobi, we know he's a problem at times. Gary Trent Jr. was wondering how he was going to respond after a horrible game too. Fred Van Sweep, I mean Fred Van Vliet, he wasn't a problem. Pascal was until Tobias Harris locked him up. A lot of Raptor fans are saying Pascal just couldn't get nothing done. No. Tobias has played the best defense. I don't know. I, Embiid's defense has been lights out in the paint, too. We blocked OG and Anobi. Embiid blocked him at the end. It was a bad call. Like most of the first half, right? Nick Nurse put in the crybaby calls two games in a row. And, of course, at home, in Canada, in Toronto, they get the calls. But it wasn't enough to stop the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, I'm not going to say it was a great game by any means of basketball standards because we played a poor first half. But the adjustments, 2-3 zone, the transition in the second half, Maxi, Harden, Embiid, Niang, Green, Harris, everybody coming in and doing what they got to do, even B-Ball Paul in the second half. And that's what we haven't seen from the Sixers team. I know we're up 3-0, right? And now the national media. Of course you're going to go 3-0. It's the Raptors. Really? We're the fourth seed. They're the fifth seed. You got Milwaukee losing to the Bulls in game two. Nets can't get past the Celtics. Kudos to the Celtics. Pelicans beat the Suns once. Wolves beat the Grizzlies once. It happens. A bad team finds a way to win, or the worst team, because there's no bad teams in the playoffs. The worser team finds a way to win one game. Only the best of the best can do what the Sixers do, and especially how we weather the storm. Shout out to everybody in the chat that, that said before the game and during the game, we got to weather the storm. This was the storm, but the storm wasn't really caused by the Raptors. It was caused by us. Turnovers. Game one, we had, I mean, game one and two combined, we had 17 turnovers. That's 96 
minutes of basketball, 17 turnovers. Well, we just played 48, and in 48, we had 24 or 20 plus. Don't quote me, 22 or 24, I can't remember. Once it gets past 20, I try to forget. 96 minutes, 17. 48 minutes, I lied because it was overtime. But that's five more minutes, what, 50-something minutes, and we really didn't turn the ball over that much in overtime. Still, 48 minutes, 20-plus turnovers, unacceptable. You're playing the Celtics, you're playing the Bucks, you're playing Miami Heat, you're going to get beat. Now, Joel Embiid, Maxi, he's at every game, 19, 20, 19, 20. He's becoming that second fiddle, and a lot of people still in the national media and some on the Sixers side are saying, we can't win with this version of Harden. Yes, we can because of Tyrese Maxey. Now, Harden was brought here to do a couple things. Orchestrate the offense, doing it perfectly. Draw double teams, doing it perfectly. But even with orchestrating the offense and drawing double teams, we needed this guy to be the second leading scorer because we didn't think this was going to be Maxey consistently. Not saying he couldn't do it, but would Doc Rivers allow him to do it? And all that has shown that he will do it. He's being allowed to do it, to do it, and, and Doc Rivers wants him to do it. So this version of Harden, 19 points, 18 points, 15 points, 25 points, 18 points, as long as he's not shooting us out the game, he's a big part. And we saw that. Kudos to Maxi, Niang, Green, Harris, and Embiid for getting it done the rest of, four, of the fourth quarter and overtime. But the offense was, you do it, I do it. You do it, I do it. It didn't flow the same without Harden. You've seen that. That's why MB had two bad looks. The one at the end of the regulation and the one in overtime where he lost the ball. Doc Rivers with a goaded, I'm talking about a goaded timeout. That was the most, that was the best coaching decision I've ever seen from Doc to hustle his little gimpy butt up the court and say timeout. 0.9 0.9 seconds. What happens after the timeout? Oh, yeah. Draws up a beautiful play, and MB knocks down a beautiful game winner. But let's see how this all transpired. Joel Embiid had a horrible first and second quarter. He couldn't find an alley to the, to the hoop. He got the ball. He waited for the double team. It didn't come. He, he got frustrated. Couldn't get it done. Turnover, miss, whatever. He was settling for jump shots. Then he gets it, and he goes right away, and it's, a not, it's not just a double team. It's a triple team. The Raptors were picking the right times to send it, and Joel B couldn't counter it. Sometimes he get it. He thought the double was come, so he wait. It didn't come, and it threw him off. Then other times it was there. Four turnovers in the first quarter. Five points. In 18 minutes of basketball. Huh? Joel Embiid? Five points in 18 minutes? But when the leader said it was time. And maybe it was. I didn't like it at the time. Danny Green got upset for a bogus, bogus call. It's neither here or there no more. He got fired up and. And a three-time champion, a a veteran in the NBA, knows how to keep his composure. He was so mad and had to let the referees know. Maxie tried to stop him. Harden tried to stop him. Embiid tried to stop him. But he was like, nah, they legit cheating. And I don't know if that did it. But after halftime, Joel Embiid, man on a mission. The crowd, the crowd was chanting, cry baby, cry baby. They were doing what Boston does to Kyrie, to Joel Embiid. To get over that hump of the Raptors in Toronto, kind of making you feel some type of way, and you saw it in the first half. And the first half was old Joel Embiid versus the Toronto Raptors in Canada. Joel Embiid said, I'm done with it. I'm an MVP. I am a bleeping MVP. Say it with me. MVP, 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 MVP. 
I'm an MVP. I don't care who I'm playing, where I'm playing. He turned up 28 points in the second half. Efficient, effective, got to the line, and did what he needed to do. And then to know that that crowd is going to mock you, yet scream at you, he shut up a country. Joel Embiid shut up the whole country. And Canada was giving it to him. I have no remorse after them. Now, I know it's all competitive, right? And we let people talk trash in the live play-by-play, right? You want your team to win. I want my team to win. But they were heckling, heckling, heckling. And Joel B brought the whole country down. And there was a guy who fell to his knees after that. Some dude. I don't know. But Joel B does what only Joel B could do in this series. And that's take it over. I love what Doc's doing. Harden, Maxi, Harris, Danny Green. Niang and Shake. One game Shake gives you 10. Next game Niang gives you 9. They're being reliable. You don't need them both. You just need one to go with the big four. Yes, we're going to be friendly to Tobias. We're going to be friendly to Doc until proven otherwise. And I don't want to jump to the heat, but I, I, I'm excited. These brooms are coming out on Saturday. I will be live. But once again, Joel Embiid took that next step and just taking over a game. You got to love it. You got to respect it. And that was a hostile environment, a hostile environment. Look at it one more time. And if you didn't hear from the opener, right, didn't hear from the opener, who's that? whose laugh is that? <laughs> the guy who left the Toronto Raptors in shambles. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. I was kind of looking to see if that guy fell, but you got to look at the other angle. With that being said, this team has the it factor. This team has something it hasn't had in a long time. The moxie. And every single deficiency, whether it was Doc's rotation, check. Joel B tired in the fourth, nope. Check. Harden doing what he needs to do, right? Not trying to score, not trying to, just doing what he needs to. Check. Maxi. Check. Harris playing like a legit role player. Check. Defense. Check. Transition. Check. Before this game, the Sixers had the highest offense efficiency rating in the offense, in the NF, NFL, in the NBA playoffs. This game took us down a little bit, but it's good to have this adversity. Every team goes through bumps. Don't let Sixer some don't let the media tell Sixer Nation you should be ashamed that you almost lost to the Raptors. The Bucks did lose to the Bulls. The the Suns did lose to the Pelicans. The Grizzlies did lose to the Wolves. It happens. It's a seven game series for a reason. Gentleman sweep is just as good. Sixers know what they're doing. They know how to execute. Joel Embiid will not be stopped. And look what he said. Look what he said to the, the man in Toronto, the man in Toronto himself, Drake. After the game, he chased him down and said, I'm coming back here for the sweep. I'm coming back here for the sweep. This game was beautiful. It, it, this, a win like this, although it looks bad, and you got to correct what you did in the first half. I understand that. It's a game that galvanized the guys. It galvanized the groups that when they are down, they can look at each other like this. We were down before. Do you remember last series? Hostile environment, down 17. What did we do? We band together. Got the dub. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section. Sixer Nation, I love your input. Y'all know y'all basketball. I need you to break me off with it again. We will be live on Friday. Friday, tomorrow, we're going to have a live stream. A couple Sixer content creators we're going to try to hit up with a couple Sixer content creators and all speak about this game, these series together. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. And I'll catch you on the next one. We out.